so we have already completed membrane filter technique so now we'll be seeing the next technique that is mpn test okay that is most probable number okay so generally there is one fixed test that we are using and the results of that test we are expressing in terms of either mpn or e coli index so that test is called as multiple tube fermentation test okay so the results of multiple tube fermentation test are expressed in MPN and E. coli index okay so this multiple tube fermentation test this will see So as the name suggests there are multiple tubes and the fermentation process occurs in it okay so in this multiple tube fermentation test there are total there are total three stages so first stage is called as pre assumptive assumptive test okay presumptive test second test is called as confirmation test or confirmed test and the third test is called as completed test completed test these three names are important so in the first stage we have to assume or we can say there is certain food which is given to the coliforms now that food is not a specialized food it will only be an indicator whether there are certain types of coliforms present now among the coliforms also if the first test that is presumptive test qualifies that is there is an indication of certain coliforms then in the second test we provide a specialized food okay that special food is only for the coliforms that means if that food is undertaken or if the food is being eaten by that coliforms then the confirmed test will give the positive results after completion of only presumptive test and confirmed test we will move to the last test that is the completed test in which we will measure the number of coliforms okay once again i will repeat initially the first stage first stage is presumptive test so in this test we will provide a common food okay common food is provided so this will give us whether there are some coliforms present or not if the first test qualifies then we will move to the second test in the second test there will be a special food this special food only it is only for coliforms that means only only e coli will only e coli will be able to only e coli will be able to take this food only for e colis and once this two tests are carried out then the final test will be identification of identification of the coliforms now so in this process there are fermentation tubes various fermentation tubes
so in this tube there is food that is provided and at the top there is one cotton plug which is present for closing this fermentation tube whatever the water sample is there that water sample is added in this fermentation tube and there is food which is present here okay now this multiple tube fermentation test multiple tube fermentation test it is designed based on the ability of e coli okay so write down this point multiple tube fermentation test mtft is designed is designed based on ability of e coli okay what is the ability of e coli e coli ferments E. coli ferments lactose and produces gas. So E. coli ferments lactose and they produce gas. so this much information right now we have seen about the multiple tube fermentation test now once the water sample is added here in the fermentation tube along with the food and closed with cotton plug this fermentation tube is then incubated okay this fermentation tube is incubated and the temperature is 37 degree centigrade for 24 hours now this point is important if we have seen e coli this ferments lactose and produce gas so if they produce gas after eating the food then there will be some bubbles which will generate here in this fermentation tube so if gas bubbles if gas bubbles are seen in fermentation in fermentation tube then the test then the test is positive then the test is positive this means e coli is present and if e coli is present that means pathogens are also present now if no gas bubbles if no gas bubble then test is negative test is negative e coli absent now this as the name suggest 
this is the most probable number using multiple tube fermentation test so we have seen only one tube now so in generally there is not one tube there are multiple tubes that are taken so let's say so this is the first tube okay so now pay attention so this initially initially we will be taking the sample the original sample of water and this is a 10 ml sample so this is 10 ml sample now from this 10 ml sample from this 10 ml sample we will put 1 ml 1 ml in the next tube 1 ml in the next tube so this will be called as 1 ml sample now from this second tube from second tube again 1 ml sample is taken and added to the third tube and this is called as 0.1 ml sample so one thing to note here is the total volume that is present in each of this is 9 is 10 ml so initially it was 10 ml in this second or we can say in this second tube there was 9 ml and 1 ml from the previous one so total 10 ml and but this is called as 1 ml sample because 1 ml from the previous test is taken into this tube so if this we keep on going if we keep on going with this one then we will get in this case you just divide it by 0 it will be 0 0.01 ml sample and this will be 0 0.001 ml sample So similarly 1 ml into this and 1 ml from this into this okay so this all we will keep in the incubators at 37 degrees for 24 hours then we will see if the gas if there is any presence of gas then there will be some bubbles which will be present so presence of any gas bubbles presence of any gas bubbles is taken as positive test okay now we'll write down some other points about mpn the laws of statistical probability are applied to multiple tube fermentation test and results are expressed results are expressed in MPN format 
that we call it as MPN number. So this MPN represents MPN represents bacterial density. That is density of bacteria, which is most likely to be present. Which is most likely to be present in water. Okay, we'll write down how the results are generally given. So MPN test results. So here sample volume is given in ml, then number of tubes tested, number of tubes positive and number of tubes negative. So what are the sample volumes? Sample volume initially there is 10 ml. So this is a standard sample volume. Okay, then 1 ml and then the next is called as 0.1 ml. 0.1 ml. So total number of tubes tested for each sample are 5. And out of these 5, if gas bubbles are formed in 3, then this will be 3. The remaining will be 2. Out of 5, if the gas bubbles are formed in 1 only, then number of positive is 1, then 5 minus 1, 4. Similarly, let's take an example of 0 and 5. Okay, so this is how the test results are given. Now, the problems on this we will discuss in the next video. How to analyze this and some problems we will see. Okay, but this table you have to understand what is this 10 ml sample. We have seen in the diagram only number of tubes tested out of let's say this 10 ml sample is there. So of this we have taken 5 samples. So of, out of this 5 how many 10 ml samples are giving the bubbles that we have to write it here. Then number of tubes which are not giving bubbles means the test is negative. So that will be total number of tubes minus number of positive. So that's it about most probable number and multiple tube fermentation test. So these three names you should definitely remember. The, this three test is to completely assure that the coliforms are present in it, especially E coliforms are present. 